she can do that, but you can't. Because you know why? Guess what? She got millions of dollars. Do you? Oh, you think you can go show up to work when you want to? And think they're going to put up with you? I don't care what you tell them. Oh, keep showing up to work. Talk about you got a headache or your mental health. They're going to mental health your little behind right on off that job and find somebody else. <music>
she is very sneaky. She'll try to run up past you. She'll just, you know, she'll just hang out and run and run. And boy, when that last lap comes, you better watch out because she's going to start trying to pass you at the end. And you all you see is her coming from nowhere. So that was pretty tricky, but a <laughs> good strategy, I must say. But that was real interesting. And then finally, the 200 meter race came on. I was like, yes. How about Gabby Thomas, our Wonder Woman? Oh, too pretty. <laughs> Boy, did she look like Wonder Woman. I saw her, I was like, oh my goodness. And everybody was saying it on the internet as well. So that was just so pretty. I love Gabby Thomas. I'm looking forward to her running again next um, Olympics. Um, got to see the Jamaicans. They've practically been competing against each other. I don't know what them Jamaicans be eating, but hey, I want to know what y'all be eating. What y'all be eating over there? How in the world them girls? I mean, all of them, they took... First, second, and third place. First, second, and third place. How you take first, second, and third place? And Shelly Ann Frazier, oh, I was rooting for her. But you know what? I'm glad she won. I'm glad Elaine won because now, because see, Shelly Ann Frazier, she's not going to be running again um, next year. She's, uh, she said, I think she said she might do the Worlds, and that's it. Um, same with Allison Felix. I got to talk about her too, what a legend. She probably do worlds as well. Probably not another Olympics, but she's not gonna be running again. So good thing Shelly Ann Frazier didn't win because now we're gonna get to still see a showdown because Elaine Tom and Elaine Thompson, um, second fastest woman, second fastest record. I mean, she ran. That girl can run. I ain't gonna lie. But um, yeah, we get to see that showdown. Hopefully, I don't know how how old is Elaine Thompson. I thought she was kind of old, though. I don't think this is her last Olympics, though. I gotta check. I ain't never look at her age. I gotta check. But we should see that showdown with her and Shakari Richardson uh, next Olympics. So I'm, I'm glad she won because now it's not gonna be, oh, I wonder if she would have beat Shelly Ann Frazier. She the fastest. No, Elaine Thompson is the fastest. So now... Now, Shakira, yeah, let's get this thing going. So I can't wait to see that. It's going to be awesome watching some of the, ooh, how about Athe Mo? Hmm, I like her. Such a natural, pretty, dark complexion girl. Very pretty. Love watching her. Ooh, and she she ran the fastest leg on the 4x4. Four four, so look for her probably to run the 400 meter race. Also with her 800 meter race that she won gold in. She did very well. I didn't enjoy the men's track and field this year. Like, I just felt like me, oh, no allows. Mm-hmm. Arian Knight. I thought y'all was going to do something. Mm-mm. No allows. Mm-mm. You ain't bring it, man. Oh, let's talk about the, the wrestler. Uh, her name is Tamara. Oh, I forgot her last name. I think she the first United, I want to say the first United States gold medal wrestler i want to say i think she was but and she's actually from my area charleston south carolina we were just talking about her in the bottle shop today i had to take my son to get a haircut um but yeah she's actually from charleston and so yeah i loved her and love 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 how she loved her country yeah go ahead samira i don't know if it's tamara i think it's tamara but she did really well. I didn't get to watch her though. I didn't. Uh, I can't get into that wrestling now. I just kind of watched some clips and stuff like that. But girl, you go. What else did I watch? Um, I did watch some basketball here and there. Um, the girls and the men's. Oh, I thought France was gonna hand it to the men's. Like France, Bill, they be doing anything. They always a challenge every Olympics anyway. But equestrian. Now, that's one sport. Now, I don't throw stones at me. That's equestrian. Uh, that's one sport. That's not a sport. I'm sorry. How is that a sport and the horse doing all the work? Like, I would never consider that a sport. Sorry, equestrian. Uh, nope. You got to be physically challenging for the body for me to call it a sport. Mm -mm. So, I don't think I would ever watch that. But it was very interesting. I must say, I enjoyed the Olympics. I really did. Like, it's going to be in Paris, um, 2024. So, boy, I wish I could go. Like, that's going to be something to watch. Like, because the guy was on TV, he was saying how they're going to set up most of the sporting events in front of the big landmarks and stuff. I was just watching, like, oh my gosh, this thing is going to be amazing. 
amazing for 2024. I wish I could go. And I hope they let the fans, like, I hope we be over all this pandemic stuff so that, you know, the fans can be there because why go through all that? And unless they just try to give us that home a show, you know, something spectacular to look at so it don't look so boring. But wow, like, I always wanted to go to um, an Olympics, um, mostly just to see track and field, you know, maybe catch some gymnastics, but it's going to be in Los Angeles, California. So 2028, hopefully I can make that. But let's talk about our girl, Simone Biles. First off, let me say what a great athlete she is. Um, I love an athlete who just keeps trying to go a step above the rest and challenge their own selves until they become their own challenge in life. So it's good to see her changing the sport and taking it up a notch, showing that, hey, we can do a lot of these moves as well. I like a girl who can go out there and have confidence and very well spoken, very well spoken. And so, but I don't know. You know what I said? I said, you know what? She, you know, hair before the Olympics, she all booed up with her boyfriend and who selfie hair and selfie there. And, ooh, look at me, new moves. Let me show y'all got some new flips and all, you know, and all the hype. All the hype. I said, boy, when she go to the Olympics, she better show up and she better show out because there's going to be a lot of pressure and a lot of stress on her because the way she was hyping herself up and that's all you've been hearing about Simone Biles this, Simone Biles that. Every time you, it seems like every time I go on Yahoo News, she on there all booed up or even the gym showing us her new moves and okay, 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 Olympics come. So I see when they arrive to Olympics, you know, she looked nice and calm, just arrived in Tokyo and okay. And so here she goes performing and performing, you know, day after day. And oh my gosh, she was she was screwing up real bad. She really was. I was like disappointed. I was like, girl, what is going on? Get your game face on. Like, what's going on with you? So, you know, watching her on the um beam, then that's when she did that little uh flip and she came all the way down, almost her knees bent, like almost like she was gonna fall for it. And she had this little stink face, like, like, oh no, like, oh no, no, I ain't doing this anymore. I was like, what? So now you quit? Like, girl, go sit down. Like, bye. Because you just been screwing up anyway. So I don't know why you put that little stink face on and went and talked to her teammates and, oh, y'all don't yeah, have to do this. And, you know, I, I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader and yada, yada, yada. And, but, I was like, no, I had to think, I was like, it gotta be something else going on. Like, what would make a person, ain't, ain't nobody gonna just quit, especially the way she trained and, you know, how she been hyping her little stuff up on, you know, social media, or like calling herself the GOAT. See, you put some of that pressure on yourself. Oh, you wanna put GOAT on your leotard and a picture of a GOAT and got everybody calling you the GOAT, which you are. But still, you let other people praise you. You don't praise yourself. Note to self. Oh, hyping herself up. So, okay. So, she messed that up, and I guess she decided, okay, well, I'm going to step out the whole rest of the Olympics. I was like, oh, for Shakari. Now, I'm a whole gymnastics watch is gone. Like, I ain't even want to watch the Olympics no more. Like, after that, I ain't going to lie. I've been disappointed. I was like, I ain't going to I might watch the rest of this Olympics. Like, I'm just done. So, okay. So, I was like, no, it got to be something else. I was like, the only thing I can see would make a person want to quit is that maybe they got a phone call and somebody close to them died. I said, maybe somebody died or something. And then, you know, I ain't been hearing no news about that. So I was like, what made this girl quit? Some reports did come out that her aunt had passed, I think on her father's side. So then I was like, okay, now maybe that was the trigger, you know, amongst everything else probably that was going on in her life. So, cause that was the only thing I could think of like, but then I was thinking, like, who would call you and tell you all that? I mean, I guess you might find out anyway because of social media. But, you know, who would tell you that a close relative died and you were having the biggest moment of your life? Like, that would just totally ruin you, depending on how close you are to that person. So I was like, okay, so that's um, what I was like. 
thinking at first anyway, like maybe somebody died because I couldn't really think of anything else. The stress of the media. Now, I know I said that had to play a part in it too. I put something to blame on them too because I, Oh my gosh, just watching the Olympics, like they could not stop saying Simone Miles, oh, the greatest of all time, and oh, the best gymnast. Like, that's all you heard. I was like, oh my goodness, they putting all this stress and pressure on this girl. Like, I was like, whoa, I'm surprised she didn't break before then. Like, the amount of stress and pressure, like, that's all they kept talking about. Like, I was like, even I caught it. I was like, are you serious? Like, how many times are they gonna tell us this? How many times they gonna keep saying that every time they show her face? Like, seem like every time you get a glimpse of Simone Biles on camera, the greatest gymnast or the GOAT. Everybody else is just battling for second place. So, I was like, ooh, get that phone, baby. Get the phone. But yeah, they've been putting all this stress and pressure on this girl. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. It got sickening. It was sickening. I was like, the amount of pressure she done put on herself the amount of pressure the news media and all of these journalists putting on her amounts probably everything else she going through in her head, you know, with her mental health and who knows whatever else, you know, aunt dying and who wouldn't get lost in the air? I'd be done lose my mind, lost in the air. I lost my mind. That's what I would have came out and said, y'all done made me lose my mind up in here, up in here. Boy, oh my goodness, it was sickening. It was very sickening. Like, even I noticed it. It was very, very sickening. The way the news media was handling her greatness. Her highness. <laughs> her greatness, right? But, yeah. Who got one of these phones? Hello? Yeah. And she started talking about all the twisties and get lost in the air. And I'm saying, okay, well, okay, yeah, I, I can see that now because of the sport. Now, like I said, I used to run track and field, but if something mentally happened in my mind, I can still run. Probably the only way I would hurt myself is because I got tears in my eyes because I'm so hurt and just mentally drained that I might trip up and fall. And I still wouldn't hurt myself that bad. But when you're doing a sport like that, now I have to say, if you're doing a sport like, because I'm always cringing when I see them on, especially balance screen. Oh my goodness. I'm like, ugh, one false step and phew, you're like, you might break your neck or break something else. But that sport, yeah, I would probably have to say, you want to be in your right mind when you're doing a sport like that because you want to come down and probably crash and maybe hit your head and you know, mess up your spine or something like that. So yeah, that's what you really do gotta be careful. I'd be on pins and needles sometime watching them do some of them moves. I'd be like, ooh, I pray for y'all. You better not take one false step. Ooh, that might be your whole career going in your body. But I can say, so I say, okay, it is different. You, you can't really compare that to any other sport because it is a very dangerous sport, one false move. So, okay, okay, Simone bows, and then it was all oh, because of her mental health. Okay, Simone bows, nobody else knows what you're going to, so okay, we'll give you that too. Because, of course, you don't know what other people are going to and what they can handle. Just because you can handle it, and you might can put your mind back together, like some of us are stronger than others, but you know, you ain't know what she's been dealing with her whole life or what she's been through and her walking life, so you just don't know what other people are dealing with. And plus, she don't owe us nothing anyway. Like, she in there showing you know sharing her talent with the world so giving us a, something to look at so okay okay some more miles we let you have that but it was just because of that face i'm probably trying to put that clip up it was that face that she had made when she came off of that being that would made me say like okay also too is because you know you've been screwing up the whole gymnastics you was so but anyway okay but basically, my message is, okay, you are not Simone Biles. Simone Biles can do that because guess what? Simone Biles is Simone Biles. And I think that's what hurt me the most too because I was like, I don't want young people to go thinking that, oh, well, I'm going to quit too. Or I'm going to tell them it's my mental health or, you know, something. I got a headache. Someone, you know, I just need a break. Like, she can do that, but you can't. So... That's the message I didn't want young people and people in general, you know, to take to heart. Like, oh, I can quit. No, you cannot. Oh, go ahead and quit. Because guess what? The next person waiting on your spot. So, oh, go ahead. 
Don't nobody care. You is not that important. Unless you got a million dollars or you own your own company and you can show up when you want to show up and you can say what you want to say and, oh, you can be sick every day and be like, I'm taking off. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and try that and see how far that gets you in life. Go ahead and quit. Go ahead and be an old quitter. Okay, but I have to give it to her. She did show back up on Beam and got bronze in the end. So at least she came back. I was like, please, come on, come back. Don't let these young kids who are looking up to you see that you just totally quit the whole Olympics. Please don't do that. So I'm glad she did show back up one event because I was like, oh, I was getting scared. It's like day after day, they kept bringing out reports and news that, oh, well, she ain't going to do this event. And, okay, she canceled on this event. And then it was like, um, the only last event was the beam. I was like, she ain't going to do no beam. Like, you know how, that's the scariest one to me. I thought she probably would have done floor over the beam. But she, I guess she figured that was maybe one of the events where, you know, she didn't have to do too much twisting. And plus, maybe she more confident and knowing she might meddle in that as well. And knowing her competition, I don't know. But I was like, beam, girl, okay. Boy, I was like praying for her. But she did it. She stuck it and she got bronze. And I was like, good. And it wasn't even like good that she got bronze. And, you know, she went out there and did it. It was just more that she, you know, she came back out there and she did it. And I was like, good. That's going to show people that, you know, she didn't really quit. She is not a quitter. You know, you quit, you dust yourself off and you get back out there. You get back up again. So... Whatever she was going through, she worked through it. And that's what you got to look at. But like I say, she can do it. You can. <laughs> she can quit. <laughs> you better not quit. Unless you're sitting on a couple millions and you secure in life. And maybe you got your own business and you can do what you want to do. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. She can quit. But you can't. All in all, I enjoyed it. You know, you learned a lot of lessons <laughs> from this Olympics. Like, this Olympics should have taught you a lot not to quit. <laughs> or don't, just don't some of y'all quit. And maybe taught some of y'all that, ooh, I'm going to go and say it's my mental health and I'm going to quit. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't you quit. Because that's what they want you to do. Like, yeah, put yourself first. You know when you can't compete and... You know, always know your mind, always know your body and what your body can do. But guess what? Still, if you're not Simone Biles and you're not sitting on millions and millions of dollars, guess what? You won't quit. But oh well, guess who won't lose out? <laughs> you. So just know that too. If you do quit and you mean where you want to be at in life and you ain't secure like she is, just know that somebody else might have your spot and ain't nothing you can do about it. I know you had to put your health first and, you know, this, that, and the other, but hey. You will be just another name in the wind that nobody's going to care about. So just know that too. I mean, that's the harsh side of it, but it's true. And let me just tell you a little story. So one day, well, I used to be a substitute teacher and I did that for a while. I loved it because I was such a good substitute teacher. Hey, I ain't trying to toot my own horn. And one time they had an opening I went and subbed at the alternative school, and I, I don't like to call these kids bad. We just say kids that like to get in trouble. And so, you know, I did such a good job. They called me back, you know, they wanted me to come like full time and just be there <laughs> working every day. And because I could handle my classroom, and you know, they ain't never got on my nerves. Nope, because I don't let nobody stress a Kia out. Nope. <laughs> so, you know, I used to be in class and Oh, you, okay, these kids, they are very mouthy, like to curse, and you know how I go, the whole nine yards, and so they would be in class, and with their little, I'm mad at the world, I don't care attitudes, and oh, I don't care, and I don't care, tell you, tell you, do something, I, I don't care, and I used to look back at them, turn like, and this is, this is me in my 20s, like early 20s, <laughs> I used to look at them chair like, these sure must be kidding me. I don't care. I used to look at back at them like, I don't care either. I got my degree. And I told them sure that so much times till I remember we was in class one day. And all one of them go mouthing off. And I don't care. And I didn't even have to say nothing because the other student looked at her and she told the other student, Miss White don't care either. She got her degree. 
in my, in my head, I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> but um, that just goes to show you when, you know, talking about Simone Biles, Simone Biles can do that. Like, I'm looking at these kids like, oh, you in an alternative school. Like, do you have your degree? Heck, you might not even get your high school diploma. You might have to go get a GD. You keep it up. Like, yeah, keep with that I don't care. I'm mad at the world attitude and thinking you can show up and show out and you ain't me there yet. Oh, go ahead. See how far that gets you. So that was very funny, but I had a good time. I had a good time substituting. It was very fun. Just meeting a lot of different people and dealing with a lot of different kids and personalities. <laughs> But yeah, you can't be showing up like that. You can't be showing up to work like, oh, I got a headache every day and, and expecting people to feel sorry for you and the boss to feel sorry for you. And, you know, maybe some of them might for a little bit because, you know, maybe you've been there for a while. Maybe you got a little tenure. Maybe you can kind of get away with it for a little while. But sooner or later, oh, you're going to headache yourself right on out there because they're going to find somebody else or find some kind of way to try to get rid of you. So, yeah, keep that little attitude up in life. Oh, I don't care. Oh, I'm mad at the world. Oh, I quit. Don't nobody care if you quit. You, all these other people in the world, who, who care if you quit? They'll find somebody else. Don't people only care about their bottom line. Their bottom line is making money. When I go to a job, I don't worry about what nobody else doing. I don't care what nobody else doing. I ain't interested in complaining about the job all day because if I had to complain about my job all day, I don't need to be there. I need to go find me another job first off. And I wouldn't been there or I wouldn't be there if I didn't like my job in the first place. So, I mean, these people are here for you to work. Like, this is their company. Would you, if you had a company, would you want somebody coming to your company bringing all that drama and situation and emotional problems? No. You want people who come there to work. Like, when you're on a job, you come to work and make money. Work and make money. Don't nobody care about your personal problems. I know you want people to care, but people really don't care. And it ain't worth telling them anyway, because then they will tell somebody else and tell somebody else and tell somebody else anyway. Go to the job, do what you got to do, and don't worry about the rest. Don't quit because you can't. And because if you do, nobody's going to care. That company care about their bottom line and that's money. So better change your attitude in life. Stay positive. And, you know, if something ain't working for you, maybe you're in the wrong spot. Maybe you're in the wrong job. Maybe you're in the wrong career field. Maybe you doing the wrong sport. I don't know. You got to figure that out. But you can't quit because nobody's going to care. That's just like how I feel right now. Oh, I can't come over here complaining about, oh, I'm so sick. I wish I really am sick. I know it really don't look like it. I just smile with my face. But y'all don't care that I'm sick. And I know y'all don't care. <laughs> I really am sick, sick, sick. <laughs> sick, sick, sick. But I said I really wanted to come on here and share this message. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here the whole time complaining about how sick I am. I've been sick almost for, shoot, a good while now. That's why I have been absent, but it's life. You got to realize that nobody cares that much. I mean, I hate to say it like that. It sounds very mean, but it's the truth. Nobody really cares that much. Some people do. We got real compassionate people. <laughs> but then even they'll get reared down by you always complaining and always being sick all the time like people got work to do they need a job done they ain't trying to work with you and how sick you is and they gotta work with their problems too and managing stuff like uh no 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 so <laughs> the moral of this story is simone bows can quit you cannot bye you guys